Hi everyone, welcome to the International Water Resources Association webinar on what South Korea can offer the world of smart water management. We are really excited to have our panel with us here today. We have a lot of experts, uh, really great depth of experience from the South Korean uh, water world. So they're going to have some great presentations for us and we are going to get started in just one or two minutes so that gives you just a little bit of time to run over and get a cup of coffee or a glass of water or whatever the appropriate beverage is for the hour that you're joining us with um, so uh, we're going to get started in just one or two minutes uh, thank you for joining us today Hi, welcome to anyone who's joining us here. Just a few minutes. Um, this is the International Water Resources Association webinar on what South Korea can offer the world of smart water management. We are super excited to have you all here with us today, and we are going to get started in just one minute. Um, so, uh, if you can get any last minute preparations, uh, that would be great. And we're going to get started and looking forward to a really exciting event today. Okay, three minutes after, so according to my clock, so we are going to get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to the International Water Resources Association webinar on what South Korea can offer the world of smart water management. We have a great set of panelists with us here today, including Professor Jun Hong Lee, a professor at Junbo University, Professor Sung Ho Lee, a vice president of the Graduate School of International Studies at Korea University, Dr. Jin Suk Su, a researcher at the Korea Resources Corporation, and uh, Professor Kim Tak Yong, a professor at Sung Gya Kao University. So uh, they're going to present um, about uh, smart water management, and they have a lot of experience in the field, um, and particularly coming from uh, South Korea, we don't um, always get this opportunity to have such depth of experience in a particular country. So I'm hoping to really learn a lot, um, get that perspective, to get their um, methods, to learn more about the research they've been doing there. So I think we're all gonna have a really great webinar. Um, this is an event hosted by the International Water Resources Association. The IWRA is an international network of researchers, practitioners uh, who work on a multidisciplinary range of water resource issues. We are a nonprofit, non governmental educational organization. Uh, the IWRA provides a global knowledge based forum for bridging disciplines and geographies by connecting professionals, students, individuals, corporations, and institutions, everyone who's concerned with the sustainable use of the world's water resources. So, we are really happy to have you all today, and we really thank you for tuning in. Um, with our great panel, we are going to discuss today the South Korean water perspective um, on management and to learn the lessons that they have working on and learn about their current activities, everything that can be helpful sort of to bridge this. Is there, is there network issues? There must be technical problems in the right office. Can you hear what he's talking about? 
Ah, ouais. I think maybe we lost you all for a second there. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if everyone if everyone heard, but. Um, Oh yeah, I think we might have yeah. first. Are we back? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, you know, South <laughs> Korea has the best internet in the world. Um, and I'm really wishing we had that here right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so you know, we are going to really look forward to the way our speakers are going to highlight the advanced technical management strategies that you guys have been employing uh, to support robust water governance and socioeconomic development. Um, finally, we would really love to continue the discussion that we're going to start here today. So if anyone who's tuning in wants to go to our LinkedIn web page after the event, um, we will continue the discussion and the debate there. So if you go to our web page and um, you'll see exactly what we have there. Um, and just as importantly, just for anyone who's, who's wondering, we are recording the event um, and we will put it on our website. Uh, www.iwra.org just as soon as we can and give us a couple of days um, as well as the presentations the PDF versions of the presentations that you'll hear here today so if you love this so much that you just have to have a second try or a third or a fourth go to our website after and you can, you can, you can enjoy it as much as, as you want um, just to briefly explain the format of today's webinar, um, this is just like all of our other webinars that we've had, but we're going to have each of our panelists give a short presentation, and then at the end, we're going to have time for audience questions. So if you have a question you'd like to ask the audience uh, or ask the, the panelists, please, you'll see there on your go-to webinar control panel, it's questions is about halfway down, it's near the bottom. If you just type your question in, I'll see it, and then I can direct it to our appropriate panelist. Um, and uh, please uh, remember to try to keep your questions uh, broad, uh, not uh, if it's a technical question, you know, I saw this on the third slide of so-and-so's, feel free to email our panelists. They're really friendly people. Uh, I've just gotten to meet them, but they're really nice people. And uh, I'm sure they'll let's answer your questions. Um, everyone likes to be asked about their research. So uh, if it's a small question like that, just follow up with them right away with the email. Um, and, and, and let's try to find questions that connect everybody and we can really kind of uh, tackle. So with that in mind, I am going to turn the floor over to Dr. Kung Tak Yung. Yes. <clears throat> uh, let me make you the presenter. Yes. Okay. Hello. The, uh, I'm very glad to join this webinar meeting. Uh, I am uh, Kyung Tak Yung, Professor Song Yung Wan University and then Director of National Smart Water Research Group, uh, Republic of Korea. Uh, today's my topic is assuring latest technological trend focusing on the Korean smart water management and uh, uh, implica implication to the global water community. Mainly, I'll introduce the outcomes uh, carried out uh, by our research groups. Uh, as you know uh, very well, the coming decade, there would be a strong uh, potential of water scarcity. Uh, furthermore, what makes the situation worse is uh, waste of uh, unknown water. Uh, it is a non-living water. More than one sort of drinking water will be lost into the ground. So uh, uh, people are going to explain. I'll briefly introduce about the Korean situation. As of 2015, uh, total population was of 51 billion and GDP was about the uh, you know that this year we uh, get that uh, 30,000 uh, US dollar. So as you can see, the urbanization rate, uh, water works service rate, and then the housing rates are very high, almost near 100 percent. And then this uh, drought map of Korea shows how much we have been suffered from seven years and continuing extreme uh, drought. It shows that the uh, increasing tendency of vulnerability and then on uh, the of water. And then the, also the climate change has changed the pattern of rainfall causing water disasters. Uh, as of the uh, consequences of a severe drought, maybe a professor Lee 
will uh, uh, explain more in detail about the uh, severe drought in Korea. I just and want to jump in real quick. You seem to have lost your presentation. Can we can we try to get your your your, your PowerPoint back up? Um, uh, excuse me. Yeah. We seem to have lost your presentation. If we, I'm going to try to to re-share your screen so we can see your presentation because I know I liked it a lot when we okay, saw okay. it earlier. There we go. There we go. Good. Thank you. Yes. Looks so good. As a consequence of a severe drought across the country, uh, recently we are uh, doing very uh, special uh, a project, and we are connecting uh, two uh, rivers in different watershed to overcome the drought. Never seen before, we have seen. Uh, to cope with this uh, city, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, to cope with the serious water issues, the uh, Korea government has started to develop technology for smart water management. Uh, as one of the actions, the uh, Korean government launched the National Smart Water Grid Research Groups in the uh, 2012 with the total budget of 35 million US dollars. The uh, targeted key research uh, in the field uh, of host one is the uh, diversifying a technology for multi-water sources. And the second one is a real-time smart monitoring and the controlling of a water network through uh, AMI uh, system. And the third one is that the uh, app-based uh, bilateral uh, communication with various types of uh, application between a supplier and the uh, consumer. As we can see, uh, this highlight uh, the shows simply the uh, technology for uh, diversifying, uh, diversifying. No, 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 I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. So as you can see, this uh, high-rec uh, smart water grid uh, has not a bit, uh, you know, the long history, just uh, initiated in the 2009. And hence, it seems the uh, Korea uh, started in the 2012 is one of the early adopters in the field of smart water grid technology. The, uh, the slide shows simply the technology for diversifying multi-water resources. That is the, you know, the intelligent water resources management. Key concept uh, of this technology is how to use many multi-sources that are available nearby Earth, like is that the sea water, and the spring water, surface water, reused water, ground water, uh, everything you know the available uh, to use. Uh, and then these slides also shows that there's some sort of a demonstration. Uh, we uh, named this uh, facility as a you know, smart hybrid water producing uh, systems with a capacity of 100 ton per day. Uh, it is located very far from the mainland the Korean Peninsula. Uh, uh, and then the, it takes, you know, five hours by a ferry uh, from the mainland of uh, Korea Peninsula, right? just, you know, the uh, under uh, North Korea. And then uh, this is equipped on unmanned control and the movable system. So blending multi-water sources in terms of in terms of the economical, ecological, and in the quantity of, of point of view is the key uh, technology. And then when we say about the smart water management, AMI system, AMI means that advanced metering infrastructure systems uh, plays a key role in terms of gathering a real-time uh, data, uh, system monitoring, and then decision making. So we have developed ultrasonic wave-based tap water meter, AMI network, and device which can reduce electricity cost and then improves measuring uh, pre-season. And then this uh, slide shows that the smart water grid uh, systems uh, built in the Yongjong Island, where uh, residence is about the uh, 17,000 uh, 17, uh, and is being operated to prove and customize the three main topics uh, such as uh, providing real-time demand-based water system management, including pump scheduling related to, you know, the prioritizing uh, use of multi-sources. And the second one is to uh, decrease non-living water by monitoring and the analysis of water pressure in water network in real time. 
And third one is to develop remote billing system to save, to save labor costs. So far, the result of this uh, demonstration plant, I mean that the leading uh, 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 lab uh, is uh, quite uh, satisfactory. Uh, Real-time uh, uh, data communication rate received through the AMI system are quite, you know, the uh, perfect, almost to the 96 uh, percent. I think, I think this rate is almost perfect. And then this slide shows the pattern of the water uh, use in various purposes from uh, big data uh, transmitted in real time. Uh, based on these patterns, we can make a plan of the uh, water supply schemes, including pump scheduling and operation of multi sources as well. And uh, another thing is, I think uh, this is very interesting. Uh, I know the uh, uh, things is that they, to facilitate a good communication between supplier and customers, we have developed different types of app-based applications. Uh, this is helping uh, to increase that the credib uh, credibility uh, from the final customers. Uh, moreover, uh, the actively to tackle with uh, water problems and to promote the water industry, uh, Korea has been developing water industry cluster in Daegu. Uh, there is also the uh, local uh, waterworks uh, modernization project starting from the two years ago to 2017 and will end the 2020. This project mainly focuses on to build block system to save non-living water energy and remote building system by introducing AM AMI system. And another big trend in water industry is Smart Water City a project. As one of the symbolic pilot project, Sejong City and Echo Data City are being launched as a pilot project already yeah, uh, uh, two years ago. And then we also have been actively cooperating with many countries like with uh, Vietnam, Jordan, and Indonesia, and also the uh, Cleveland Water Alliance in the USA or so. Uh, uh, yes, time is already done. So thank you for your attention. And then lastly, I want to uh, conclude my presentation saying that the, we are always led to cooperate and share our smart water management technology to cope with increased water uh, stress. Thank you. Excellent, and thank you so much for that presentation. What I really liked, and we don't get enough of this um, in our webinars, I think, is an approach from the engineering, the technical side. Um, yes. We are so, we do a lot of focus on law and the, the, the socioeconomic side, um, social studies side. So I really enjoyed seeing some, some real um, the data and, and to understand a little bit better about the sensors and things like that that underlie this because once we get better data, I think it really helps us improve our ability to make these kind of um, legal frameworks and, and to, to do an analysis of socioeconomics. I think it all works together. Um, and I think that was a really helpful uh, presentation. Yes. Um, now we are gonna see from Dr. Sung Ho Lee. Um, let me put yeah. the enter. Can you see that my presentation file? Not at the moment, but sometimes it takes just a second. There's a lot. There you go. It's there. Yep. It looks good. Oh, make it make it uh, full, full screen, screen there. Okay. There we go. That looks beautiful. Okay. So Thank you very much. Yes, I'm very delighted to join this webinar. And I'd like to talk about the more social, economic, and political side instead of technical issues, because Professor Young, he was uh, working with me uh, since that, uh, yes, in, in, back then, 2009. And that was uh, giving me an opportunity to think about how we can really improve their water resource management career uh, in a smart way. Okay, the, this is my uh, presentation, the background definition and policy impacts. 
and background, I think the Professor Yama already talked about a lot why we need to have this smart. Here, actually, I can say that rather smarter water management because I don't really want to underestimate what has been done before, particularly in the engineering side, my colleagues. So we, we don't really say dull, but then I will say smarter water management. There are many, many issues, particularly we have a climate change, population growth, and diminished investments. And also, we need to have some time a new, new way to look at uh, how to improve their water resource management. And then because of that, if you look at the, the final, the bottom bullet points, water, energy, and food, and urbanization and climate change, now people, they're going to put link everything together. And because of that, people are becoming, having the ha headache. But anyway, we need to find some more innovative way to resolve all these issues. So then I put some, some of the uh, the new approaches, and then because of that, we need to combine these new approaches into one big basket, which would be that, I would say, smart water management. And definition that I think already uh, Professor Young provided us a wonderful background also of a view of the, what smart water management is about. But I'd like to say a bit more about it, because this is not necessarily only just focus on ICT-related ones. Uh, I would say the career we, we, I mean, in terms of social economic developments, uh, since the early 1990s, Korea has been starting its own economy based on um, information technology. Because of that, we have very strong background in terms of technology and engineering. Because of we have fully utilized this wonderful expertise in terms of improving water resource management. But then, apart from that, uh, the one more important thing is that this is a two-way information uh, is now given to the, not only the suppliers, but also the, the consumers, because of the, we need to think about this two-way communication already pointed out by Professor Young. And also the impacts of the smart water management will be not only uh, factored into that this only water resource management that field, but also agriculture industries and ecosystems. So we need to think about these multidimensional impacts of smart water management. Uh, this is a one the, one of the pictures I'd like to share with you that if you on, try to understand what smart water management is about is that, of course, we need to think about right hand side, uh, big data and collection and analysis was big data was the one of the key terms back then, a few years ago, people are so much excited about how to play with the big data. Uh, this is all about the data we can collect from not only households, but industry, agriculture and the environment. And also, we need to think about also the network. Network is important because we are not only dealing with about just point by point where we are talking about network. Because of that, already AMI and smarter sensor and metering and servers. And also, that's most importantly, uh, we, we need to, when we talk about smart water management, is that more like decentralized water resource management, which is slightly against that our conventional way to uh, manage water resources from centralized uh, systems point of view, so which means that we are now looking at some uh, different local areas, a uh, regional, also river basin level, instead of the very much centralized and also energy consuming water resource management. So the, my more important, a uh, more important part of my presentation is about policy impacts. There are four uh, bullet points I'd like to emphasize. The first one is improvement of service quality. The reason is that we now for, I would like to focus more on consumers rather than service providers because we are now discussing that the, the merits of smart water management is because it's, it's something to do with data, data flow between consumers as well as service providers. So far, consumers have been rather marginalized because they are the one that they receive all the services instead of the very much proactive, but they are very passive. But if you, we are now improving smart water management, which means that consumers will be becoming proactive stakeholders to monitor real-time information, for water sanitation services, which means that saving water and immediate uh, check of problems in water uh, supply and also the wastewater services. And second one is about preparation against extreme climate change events, because we are now advocating multiple water, water sources and decentralized water and sanitation service facilities and networks, and also well prepared against extreme weather events, for example, urban flash flood and long spell drought, 
based on our different multiple and decentralized water supply sanitation service systems. And also we can uh, we save energy. Now, we remind us about the, our important ongoing discussion about water as in food nexus or even something else, organization climate change. The third point I'd like to make is low investment and high return, which is very much ideal, wonderful a dream of all investors, which will be possible based on smart water management because we are now using already distant facilities rather than constructing brand new ones, because we are now connecting uh, different sources of water as well as already distance of first facilities, because of that we are now achieving self reliance of local areas. And a short distance and also emergency water transfer possible, which is also including long distance. My last point is about better water governance at the river basin level, the two-way information for the service providers and consumers and consumers with better access to water data, which means that let them have the more capacity to monitor service quality provided by public and private providers. And because of that, eventually, data sharing means that power sharing, which means also power is now being transferred from service providers to consumers, will be a prerequisite for strengthening stakeholder engagement in decision making at the river basin level, which means also and ultimately, probably we can achieve that water democracy at the river basin as well as the local levels. So this is my final slide, uh, smart water, water management in terms of policy impacts, that we can improvement of service quality and tackling climate change, adverse impacts, and low investment and high return will be possible, and also we can achieve better water governance. That's it. Thank you very much. Well, that was an excellent presentation, and I really appreciated that. I, mean, I think that kind of springboards off my last comments um, and the ways that, you know, the data that we can collect with smart water management doesn't have to be just thought of as, as a, a tool for optimization of water resources, but it can feed into policy, it can feed into governance, it can feed into other uh, branches of, 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 of a study that, that, that focus on water as well. So it doesn't have to be siloed, it, it, it can go everywhere. I thought it was a good presentation. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to go to Professor Junhon Lee now. Yeah, hello. Here you go, making you the presenter. Okay, I'm trying to do that. And please remember anyone, if uh, you have questions, please just um, send them right away. Uh, don't, don't, you don't need to, to wait until the end. Um, you can send the questions now and then you'll be I guess uh, top of the list uh, when we get to that 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 after the uh, last presenter, um, the question box as you'll see is just about halfway down on your GoToWebinar control panel. You can just open it up, type your question, and I'll see it right away, and then we can present it, uh, ask it after the uh, presentations are finished. So, uh, can, Dr. Jun, uh, floor yes, is yours. Can see this slide? Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks quite good. Yeah, okay. Hello everyone, my name is Juan Lee from uh, Jungo University and I prepared the talks about the drought issues of Korea and the presentation I prepared is a little bit far from the smart water management which was presented by the two prepares, previous professors and this uh, the slide is a pretty conventional and classical methodologies to assess drought risk of the reason but I want to introduce the, the Korean government effort to prepare for the extreme drought, which was forecasted in the near future. Okay, this is first slide I prepared. In prior to the initiation of the drought risk assessment, I would I'd like to tell you what is the drought and what is the risk, uh, what to shot is. Uh, it looks like a uh, very same, but uh, in terms of uh, its meaning, a little bit different. I can explain the, the difference between the drought and water shortage based on these schematic diagrams very easily. Uh, in drought case, it is the temporal water imbalance and it is natural phenomena. When it's going very long lasting, we call it aridities, permanent deficiency, but it is natural and temporal. But the water shortage, it is temporary, same as the drought issues, but it is man-made. So the natural phenomena can, we cannot stop or we cannot start the drought. 
but we cannot we can stop the water shortage by the constructing some different types of water resources facilities so drought preparedness and water sh shortage preparedness is quite different that's why i want to show the how to assess the drought risk and how to assess the water shortage in korea for the next slide okay uh, let's uh, find out the, what is the definition of the risk. Drought uh, risk is defined as the expectation value of losses such as the death, injuries, and properties, and it would be, that would be caused by the natural hazard. So, risk assessment methodology was developed by different organizations such as the IPCC and USGS, but Risk can be assessed by three main categories. First one is the vulnerability and hazard component and exposures. Also based on the USGS, they uh, assess the drought risk by the natural hazard component with the vulnerability uh, systems. Okay, so at this time, the, the how the Korean government assess the drought risk. So. The Korean government assessed the drought risk by the hazard component, which was uh, assessed by the hydrometeorological indicators, such as the uh, drought occurrence uh, probability as the severity and area extent. And then coupled with the vulnerability. Vulnerability can be assessed by the many different types of uh, socioeconomic components, and such as the exposure component and the coping capacity component. Exposure can be assessed by the populations and uh, uh, you know agricultural areas and the industrial areas and the coping capacity can be assessed by the how much uh, how many uh, water resources uh, supplying facilities such as reservoirs and uh, uh, multi multi-purpose dams do we have so finally by the coupling this hazard component with the vulnerability component we can assess the drought risk at the final stage. So drought risk can be assessed by combining hazard component, component with the vulnerability component. And the vulnerability component uh, will be assessed based on the exposure with the coping capacity. So one idea we added by these figures that the, when you combine the exposure with the coping capacity, we can implement water budget an analysis by the using some different types of uh, uh, you know, hydrologic models. And then final result we can get from this modeling process is water shortage. So we assess the drought risk by the hazard component with the water shortage. And <clears throat> data we use is that uh, the observed previous data we call it baseline from 1966, 1976 to 2005. Maybe it is lasted until 2018, but we used just 30 years data. And we used the future climate change scenarios based on the 26 different GCMs, uh, you know, generated climate data. We call it near future and mid future and far <coughs> future every 30, 30 years time slices. And this is first result we have. This is the drought hazard map. It was calculated by the standardized precipitation index. It was the very you know, commonly used representative meteorological drought index. And we calculated it and assessed it using the future climate change scenario. So, so this is the observed data of the Korean Peninsula. And conventional drought hazard where area was focused on the southern part of the Korean Peninsula. And when you forecast using the different climate change scenarios with the different GCMs, the spatial temporal distribution of drought hazard area is moving from this zone to, the, to another way. So we can forecast and uh, the estimate the drought hazard area in the near future or far future. And next slide uh, shows the result of a volatility assessment. First assessment result is that how much water demand happened in the future for the Korean peoples and Korean industry and Korean agriculture. So we forecast a trend of uh, population increase and decreasing trend of agricultural areas. 
and we finally get the the uh, spatial temper variation of the uh, water demand in Korea. And uh, also we can calculate the potential water supply capability of the Korea based on the different climate change scenarios and different uh, global climate models. And then finally, we can get the water shortage by the uh, water, water budget analysis models. So this red spot area is the very serious area, which is expected great amount of water shortage in the future. And by coupling this water hazard, a uh, drop hazard with the uh, water shortage, we can finally get a result of a drought risk area of South Korea. This is the final result we have. And we're still working on the result to, you know, calibrating the accuracy of the, this uh, uh, drought risk assessment result. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you so much. And I really enjoyed that presentation. And I thought, um, particularly in light of climate change, the impacts that we're seeing around the world, um, here in France, um, we just had the hottest day on record ever, and um, we're still suffering from quite a significant drought, both here and uh, around uh, many other countries. Um, I know that's also been a concern in the news in India. Um, and I thought the research you're doing there could really be impactful in these other contexts. Right. So it was really good to kind of get that 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 um, the research and see that and, and and be thinking about that. So our final. Uh, presenter is Dr. Uh, Jing Suk Su, and now correct me if I'm wrong, but Dr. Jing Suk Su is uh, joining us on his phone mobile. So um, the presentation will be on Professor Sung Ho Lee's computer. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to make you the presenter. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jing Suk Su, working with the K Water. Okay, what is the uh, the solely the public corporation dealing with the water management and water resources planning? So uh, today um, I have a, a a little bit issue with the, my computer, especially with the uh, my webcam. It doesn't work, so uh, you cannot see. It's a, it's a really good looking, but uh, I'm just sorry, sorry for the uh, not good this this uh this time so so my uh topic is the social economic benefit especially is the uh, implement implement implications and lessons from the uh the k water the swm the projects i have two uh the project projects with the swm the paju swc and sosan swm the projects so next Next slide. Can you try making yeah. the slides um, full screen there, if you could? There's a small thing. Yes, can you see that? Yes, that looks perfect. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think uh, there are some kinds of the tools Uh, kind of tools for the SWM implementation in Korea. The one is the uh, the SWG smart water grid. So that is the Professor Yum talked about that before. And the second one is SWC smart water city in urban areas applying the SWM system or SWM technology. So Kwater has two. Um, the uh, successful the projects, the one is the Paju City and the other one is the Sosan City. So the case one is Paju City SWC projects it is the purpose of the increasing tap water drinking ratio by the water information sharing with the customers. The second case is is to increase the revenue water ratio in highland area by decreasing non-revenue water ratios. It's already to using the SWM technology, SWM systems. Next slide, please. Yeah, I would like to uh, introduce the SWC in Paju City. 
So there are three core components that there are the smart devices, smart solutions, and smart services. As you know, the smart devices is the it's a lot of devices in the SWM systems. The solutions is the the systems. So Korea has all that is the water net, water network monitoring systems, and the other one is the remote relinquish the monitoring systems. But important thing is about the other uh, before two the smart solution and devices, the smart services is really important, I think. Is there, uh, there is a, the, a real time water quality information systems and solving issues and meeting the consumer's needs with the, uh, the Apple apps or with the providing the uh, water diary, water care and water communities. Okay, next. Next. Yeah, there are core performances with the SW, SWC projects. The first one is improves the water quality in tap water. It is the decrease the chlorine service range by splitting injection points. It's really high to, from the 6.0 up to the 36 one point the percentage. So second one is to decrease in turbidity of tap water by flushing edge to indoor pipes. And next. Yeah, another the uh, the performance is is really highly promoted water services for Paju citizens. It has increased the drinking direct drinking rate of tap water one point up to thirty six point. And the second is increased the custom satisfactions related to water the supplies. It is the uh, the initial the project is is just eighty point seven percent, but up to ninety three and ninety three eight percent in the end of the project. The next, yeah, second case is Sosan City. Is Sosan is located highly in the areas in Korea, so there are some. The components it's very uh, important, but a little bit the uh, the little bit similar SWM systems uh, as the uh, SWC in Paju project. The first one is the uh, the district metered areas, the, but the K water has the more fragmented DMA as we said this SDMA. So I talk to talk about the, the latest, the, uh, the next pages. And the second one is the smart solutions. It's almost the same one. And the smart services is the same with the uh, SWC projects. Next. Yeah, I would like to say it's a key performance with the uh, Sosan City projects. It is the, the first one is better leakage detection and analysis. The leakage inspection focusing on the three DMAs, the seven leakage repaired. So as you see on the slide, so the leakage, the, uh, the, leak, the leakage inspections is, is really the, uh, located in seven the areas. So we got some, the, uh, some benefit from this the, uh, detection system. So, the point thirty percent to thirty nine percent, and so we repaired some the uh, the leakage the pipes and the leakage areas. So we got some the two point. Oh, hello. Oh. Okay. Next page, please. Oops. Sorry about this, the, uh, okay. And sorry about this, this interrupting because the, uh, my computer is in the, uh, the institute is, is not working yet. Okay, the, the second performance is the, uh, the improve the revenue water ratios after the installing smart metering systems, the revenue water rate increased up to 18 
0.7% is in September 2016, uh, compared to the previous year's September 2015. The next pages. Yeah, uh, this is the, um, I'm just introducing the, some projects that Skywater implemented. So actually I would like to say some, the lessons learned from these the, uh, two projects in South Korea. So the first one is the, uh, the, at the beginning of the projects, the public, the investment by national or the public institutions like uh, the K Waters is very initial, the factor to be successful, the uh, SWM systems in Korea. The second one is that it is also important to develop the, uh, the residents, the confidence in water quality improvements by providing the visual information to customers and the diverse services. The last one is the, uh, the stakeholder participation and the coordination mechanisms is the really key point to the success of the SWM projects. Thank you so much for attention. Well, thank you so much for that presentation. I thought that was really great. And what I really enjoyed hearing was the ways that smart water management can city scale. Um, I know one of the questions that we're going to be discussing here in a few minutes looks at the proper scale for using metering um, in the household discussion at the, the city implementation and particularly ways they can be used to Hello, Scott. Oh, where we don't go. Maybe. I think maybe we, we have a drop there in the connection. I really, really wish that uh, in addition to the smart Well, it looks like we're having connectivity problems all, all across the board. Can people can, can people hear us? Is everyone back on? Yep. 
Okay, I apologize for that. Uh, we need to quickly address that issue. Um, all right, well, as I was trying to say um, uh, to everyone that we have a great opportunity for questions. Uh, we have about 40 minutes left. So if you have any questions at all from our, our audience, please take this opportunity to type this in on the question box. I'll see it and I'll address it to our panelists. This is a really good opportunity to be able to interact with some uh, leading researchers from Korea in the water um, uh, field. So please take advantage of this opportunity. Um, oh, quickly, we're going to do a poll um, and the poll this week um, will look at the effective ways to connect with um, water experts in Korea. Um, so uh, I'm going to quickly launch the poll and then we'll see the results. Um, and the idea here is in one of the things that um, IDRA has traditionally I think we got everyone back. <laughs> we are still here. Yeah. Yeah, good. So, uh, that's, that's what I mean. you, can go, you can go anywhere. I, it's just me. Um, all right. Can can everyone see the poll? I I, I here, let's see if we can launch. Uh -huh. Poll is open, it says. Okay, um, so the poll is out there, and if people can can respond, um, you know, what, what, what will you be able to connect better with uh, the researchers in Korea? Um, some of the first research I did with with IWRA was looking at the best ways to bridge the science policy interface um, to improve that communication between. Um, people who are doing research in one place and, and, and the people who need to get that research in other places. So um, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get some Think people are, are we back? People can hear me now. No, we, we, we just can't see the poll. Okay, well, uh, it looks like people are, are voting. Um, I'll give you guys one more minute to vote. We have 57% uh, of people have voted so far. So um, and it looks like it's a real neck and neck here between more conferences and events in Korea and more social media or informal outreach. Uh, everybody likes the Twitter, I guess. So good opportunity to remind people that IWRA has a Twitter account. So give us a follow. We'd love that. Um, and give people just uh, one more second here and we'll close it up. Okay, well with 67% of people having voted, um, 
I am going to close the poll and the winner is additional research. Well, it's a 50, it's, it's a 30 percent additional research opportunities um, for researchers to go to Korea um, and more social media or informal outreach. So that is very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that will be helpful. Uh, a, a good way to, to to sort of look at different scales and ways that we can can that, that researchers can connect and 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 to interact with um although I'm, nobody wants to be told to to tweet uh as part of their job but uh, <laughs> you know uh this is a good opportunity to uh, uh to, to think about different ways that um that we can kind of get that that message out there better so how about the first question and uh, again uh, as i think as i mentioned um i'm going to tell my panelists don't worry about asking who's going to go or anything. Just turn your microphone on and 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 speak. Um, but you know, what what do you think are some of the specific means or ways that the world can get to know the water innovations happening in Korea and then apply them in their own contexts? Uh, what, what do people think about that? What, what's ways to get what's happening in Korea put into the, into the local contexts here in France or in America or uh, India or Africa, what, what, different um, places. What do people think? Uh, does my panel, uh, would somebody, um, Dr. Sung Ho Lee, uh, would, would you like to respond? Uh, what, what are some <laughs> ways to get to know the water context, you know, to, to get the, the, the context applied in, in other, uh, the innovations happening in Korea applied to context, do you think? And you draw from your own research if you like. I think that the the local context will be very important. I mean, this is a very Korean case, and also we have very specific, uh, like um, specific infrastructure, for example, uh, we have no problem about the internet connection. And because of that, the, the other engineers, they already pointed out and emphasized that the wonderful and also the Good quality of good quality of data use and also smartphones or related gadgets. The problem is if you apply these different kind of technologies into some developed and developing countries, we should have some more tailored methods or tailored strategies before getting into the any local markets. So then I think it's more important to have some more local context, understanding local context, and also we need to gauge that the difference between Korea's expertise and also the other counterparts' expertise. Because of that, I mean, we need to have some pre-meetings and conferences to understand that our Korean expertise as well as all the other partners' expertise, that will be the prerequisites for doing any kind of projects before we moving on. And also, of course, there's a difference between developing and developed countries. Uh, for example, I've been involved at some, some, of the, some of the projects related to Cambodia and Laos and Thailand. And even that between these countries, the Mekong Ripen countries, they have different uh, technological uh, advancements and also their own the regulations and uh, legal systems. Uh, we need to think about those issues and also how the people there. In, another aspect is that the customers, how they mean, uh, for example, IT or ICT awareness. If they're familiar with that, also probably we have better access to the market and also we can persuade that policymakers to the, accept the new ways of how to improve their water resource management based on smart water technologies and also greed. But otherwise, that it will be very, very difficult. So that we need to assess that some of the risks, particularly before moving on to any kind of different markets. I like that response and I think it's really important to, to to note the importance that that although you know you want to take these these innovations that are being found around the found in Korea and to export them 
it has to be done in the local context. You, you can't just uh, take, take the book and, 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 and put it over there and just implement it and do those, those uh, plans. No, it has to be done in that context. And that takes a lot of uh, planning and, and, and timing and, and, and deliberative action um, to make it happen. So uh, Dr. Junho Lee, uh, did you have an opinion about the get the innovations happening in Korea and put them into context elsewhere? Well, as you previously mentioned that the Korean water resources management skills and environment is uh, very high in terms of IT. We have very high standard of IT technologies and that makes us uh, very high levels and high speed of the smart water management skills. And uh, as uh, the Professor Kyung Tae Gyeom He's, he was used to be a vice president of K-Water. I'm telling you this story because that uh, uh, Korean uh, smart water management is, uh, you know, pushed by very one central organization such as K-Water. They have a very great power and great technology and great manpowers and a great amount of budgets. So that makes the K-Water is a capable of, of uh, pulling the, all the researchers to develop the smart water management skills. So one uh, good thing is to, uh, to you know, get to know the information about the Korean side, the smart water management skills is communicate with the, uh, you know, the K-Water experts. That's going to be first step to understanding Korean, uh, the smart water management skills. And then now the the smart water management uh, technologies is transferring to the local government because that the, the smart water management, the representative of the, the organization is the K water with the, the local government. So uh, maybe in the near future that the, the smart water management skills going to be implemented in the local government too very soon. I think that. Yeah. Okay, that's. That's really um, that's important. I think you're right that there's a certain, it needs to be a two-way street. Um, I mean, people need to, to be going to Korea and, and talking and engaging with the, with the researchers there as well um, to kind of understand, you know, what, how can these ideas be applied in their own context. Uh, Dr. Jing Suk Su, uh, did you have uh, any, any feedback? Or... Hello? Hello. I think the uh, stakeholder participations was the the community based organizations involve, involvement is is key to the success of the SWM projects. So actually, the the CBO community based organizations involvement is is it's really necessary to reflect the various needs at the local levels and from the uh, locals. So such a um, this involvement is particularly important to develop the appropriate strategy for smart urban management scheme, which means it, it, is, it varies depending on the local context, but there is no one size fit all. But these projects, these SWM projects could be successful carried out in other, in other cities as well, because they are, by working with the local and diverse holder engagement, to ensure appropriate solutions that are developed with local circumstances, I think. I think we might have gotten got a connection problem here again. Yeah. Um, Dr. Su, can can you maybe recap what you what you said there? You mean me? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, could you just uh, so if, if it didn't it wasn't heard, um, could you summarize what 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 your your thoughts were there? Um, I. I think the uh, the key point is 
for the uh, the successful SWM project and SWM the systems, you know, local versus the nation, right? So stakeholder participation and the uh, civic coordination, those mechanisms is is key point to the success of the, the SWM projects in other cities as well. Okay, yeah, no, that's good. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Professor uh, Kung Tak Yung, uh, yes. what did you think in this context? Yes, uh, as I mentioned already, since 2012, we have developed many, you know, the some algorithm, or some instruments, and some sensors, and some, I you know, the uh, there are so many outcomes. And we already realized that the, our technology in the living lab, so that means that the, we are so convinced about our technology, I mean the smart water technology, that the, you know, but the, the problem is that the, how to promote, how to, you know, the expand, how to advocate our technology, but we have the developed, not only, you know, domestic, but also the, uh, out of the, our country, I mean that the overseas. So that is, you know, very important. The our, you know, the research product, research output, should be connected into the uh, industrialization. So, uh, yes, I know that the uh, uh, contacting local, you know, the uh, point is very important, but it's also very, uh, you know, difficult. So, those strategies, uh, what I have is that the now in nowadays I contact with the Koika uh, to uh, uh, know the uh, expand uh, our you know, technology. So uh, for one example, uh, I'm trying to contact, you know, the Jordan and Vietnam and the Indonesia. So uh, I uh, used to contact with that country through that the uh, Koika uh, but also some, you know, the uh, uh, conference and some uh, uh, the uh, uh, workshops and sometimes the uh, some uh, 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 the friend who is working for the UNA government, etc. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, connection with the, that the uh, uh, stakeholders, I can, you know, the promote, I can develop some of the projects, just like the feasibility study for adopting uh, smart water with technology into, you know, Jordan, and then the uh, Jakarta, and then the Vietnam or so. So anyway, uh, what I'm talking is that the, my point is that the, oh, we need to try to you know define uh, looking for some uh, the uh, uh, stakeholders huh? how to you know the uh, promote how to advocate how to expand the technology what we have done uh, so far in korea you know the uh, korea is very strong in, in the uh, context of that the ict you know technology so that's why uh, we sincerely want to, you know, the cooperate with the other countries. So the purpose of this webinar is one of these, you know, the intent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd like to oh, go on. Sorry, did I, were you finished? Were you finished? Yes, yes, finished. Okay. Well, I, I like what you had to say. In particular, I think that was a smart idea about identifying the strategy of stakeholders because, you know, it, it's one thing to um, put out policy briefs or to put out, um, you know, whatever, journal articles or, or, or things like that. But if you're just throwing them out into the void, uh, there's really no guarantee that they'll be picked up. But I think once you find the right the stakeholders and you can communicate directly with them, then you can tailor the message and you can say, okay, what is the context? You know, how can we make this happen um, in a way that, that that's more effective than just publishing and, and putting it out there um, in the in the internet? The, 
So, okay, let's move on to questions from the audience. Um, we have a lot, and uh, so again, please just, if you're on the panel, just jump in. Um, so the first question from Greg Leslie is, uh, in urban environments, what is the appropriate scale for deploying smart meters? Is it the individual house, or is it by the apartment building, or is it by a whole precinct or a, you know block uh, or larger area? What is it, what's the right scale? Also, okay, the overall answer that the questions. So you know, the uh, two uh, uh, major the uh, flow rate is there are you know two types of the uh, uh, instrument. One is that the flow matter, which can be installed in the uh, uh, the uh, uh, more uh, big you know pipe, but smart meter should be uh, we can say the smart meter should be installed in the uh, a private you know the house or a private you know the uh, the uh, public and then the, uh, the the commercial you know the uh, sector so it is very important when you talk about the smart water general technology we have to know that the uh, uh, the uh, flow rate uh, consumed by the each you know the household is very important in your time okay okay did did anyone else want to do my question Okay, I think we are back. Um, okay, so as I was asking, um, slum and rural communities suffer injustices to access to water, which we've discussed on several past webinars. Um, but what lessons can we learn from South Korea, and specifically from the smart water management, in securing access to water for these communities, for slum and rural communities? How, how can this be applied in those, those specific contexts? Would anyone like to to answer? Uh, Professor Junho Lee, do you have do you have some some thoughts on this? Can you hear me? Yes, did, did you mention, did you ask me or I, did you ask Professor Yi Uh Whoever wants to respond, to be honest, uh, you're, you're speaking, to have, you have the floor. I was talking about how to respond, and because I, as, as we already talked about, the smart water management the very important foundation is that something to do with ICT, so we are talking about information technology, so if you do not really have that good level of or cutting edge level of technologies, then of course we need to really aim to have low tech or also we now have in the new term a proper technology. But then one of the major ideas behind or embedded in the smart water management is not necessarily we should have this high tech ones. We can apply some low tech one too. And one of the more uh, the one of the important ways how to improve that water resource management, particularly for slum and marginalized area, is that we need to let them have better access to clean water and proper sanitation services. Based on this one, of course, it's connected to uh, sustainable development goal number six. 
So we have to think about how to do it. Maybe we should come down from this very top down, also higher level smart water management, and then go down to that very much low tech. And we, we should think about some decentralized water supply systems, which will be also available in local context and also poor areas too. So then we can think about the, how to connect that probably local wells and also small scale water sources. And then we need to improve that water quality. And also then later on, we can put some more networks. And then although it's small scale, at least we can reach that good level of, or good quality of clean water and also better sanitation services. I think that will be the good starting point. And then later on, maybe if you have successfully have the attracted more and more investment, uh, not only on the public side, but also private side, probably you can expand that the network and also improve that whole communities. That's my idea. Well, that's really good. Thank you. Um, I think, I think you, you made a good observation there that it can be easy sometimes, I think, to get focused on the, the technology, um, uh, you know, and, and put all of it on that. But sometimes, you know, especially in, in contexts where um, financing might be an issue, uh, management, uh, not management, but upkeep, uh, maintenance can be issues. Uh, you have to go low tech and, and you have to be able to find ways that, that you can make the smart water management happen in the high tech sphere, but take smart water management down to the low tech. Um, so I think that was a good observation. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next question is besides using smart sensors, do you, uh, anyone on the panel, uh, invite input from commercial or residential customers on how they use water with me, and how many people are in the facilities or homes, and how do you manage and predict the, that demand? comes from Mary Eggert, uh, who I think has, has left the webinar, but hopefully she will watch this on recording. Uh, would, would anyone like to, like to jump in and contribute to that question? You know, do, how do you how do you interact with customers? You know, uh, at the household level. I mean, it's again, you know, it can be one of these things where people in the office, the bureau, it's it's you know, hundreds of miles away. Uh, and how do how do you get that kind of interaction with people who live in their houses and say, well, what's you know, how are you using the water? What, what's going on here? Uh, Professor Jing Suk Su, uh, would you like to respond? I can't see you, so sometimes I'm just kind of let's send it over there. It's good. Hello. Yes. You hear me? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, can you uh, repeat the questions again? I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't. Uh... I didn't hear. I didn't hear you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. You know what? Uh, Scott, I ask you to repeat the question, please. Hello. Uh, hello, Doctor Sue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Okay. You hear me? Oh, it's so weird. What are you talking about? Scott mentioned about the question, so the how to interact with the customers in a long distance. How could you really improve that the customer relationship if they are located some far away? Then how could the smart sensors or smart meters? How could you improve that the services? Yeah, that's a lot of listening. Um, I, I think we might might have lost you all again. 
Um, Dr. Su, uh, did you respond to, or, or Dr. Yom uh, to that, those questions regarding the, how to interact with people at the household level? You know, the, uh, you know, the, in, in Korea, the smart meter in the uh, private house uh, used to be installed by their own, you know, the cost. Uh, the uh, problem is that the, uh, to check the uh, how amount of water they use, the, uh, the uh, people go there uh, to check the amount of the water, means that the uh, check the uh, gauge uh, per or month. But uh, the smart meter uh, can you know, the, uh, transfer the, the uh, quantity in real time. So that means that the, we can, you know, the uh, uh, build in the remote uh, building systems. In that case, we can save that the labor cost to the uh, uh, check the uh, uh, amount of the water in each house. That means, you know, the uh, the uh, you mean that the uh, the censoring and the transferring that the data is very important. So that's why we used to you know the introduce that the Aurora systems. That is you know the key point. So uh, the uh, the remote building system is getting you know the expand uh, in our days in Korea. No need to go there to check the uh, what a quantity they used. So uh, by you know the in real time we can check the uh, amount of water they used. That is, you know, remote building systems. That is the key point of the smart world to the green technology. By knowing that the real time, the water usage, uh, so based on that the real time demand, we can control that the water supply schemes and how to save that the cost of the pumping scheduling is that, you know, key point. So that's why smart meter is the very uh, key point uh, when you talk about the smart water uh, grid. Okay, okay, I understand that a little better. Um, with our remaining time, I'm just going to go on to the next question. Um, uh, given all the developments in Korea so far, um, this comes from Callum Clinch, uh, Executive Director of the IWRA. Uh, given all the developments in Korea so far, what is the biggest challenge still facing Korea in relation to water resource management moving forward? What, what, what's still holding back, even though so much development has happened? Anyone can 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 respond. Uh, if they like. Well, uh, there are two different big issues like other countries have in Korean uh, water resources management. The first one is flood, and the other one is uh, drought. And uh, 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 last uh, past thirty years, we invest a tremendous amount of budgets to you know cope with the flooding issues. So. I think that uh, in Korean case, that the in flooding issue is quite stable. It's hard to find the flooding disasters in Korean peninsula. I mean, in the South Korea. But recently, that uh, the natural disaster issues move on to the drought issues because that we hardly prepared for the drought issues. And um, I heard some uh, very interesting news from the Google that the France is now suffering from the very severe drought in the middle zone of the France. So it's the same to Korea. So uh, recent five years annual precipitation is less than the maybe around the 60 percentage was said less than the 60 percent is around the 70 percentage of the annual precipitation. So it it means that it's the some drought expert to expect that it's the signals of a mega drought of the Korea, which will be lasting more than 10 years or 11 years, like a California drought and Australia millennium drought. So uh, recent, uh, the, the, the issue is that how to management, how to smart, lim smart management, manage the water resources by the SWM technology. The other one is, is, is that uh, how to prepare for the long lasting not one year, two, two year lasting, because that the Korean water resources 
uh, Korean water resources management technologies can uh, cope with the two years resting drought. But when it's getting longer, then how, what is the best way? What, what kind of conting contingency plan we have is the uh, recent issues we have for the Korean experts, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, does anyone else want to, to respond to that as well? I'd like to add one more thing related to the biggest challenge in Korea, water resource management. Uh, what I can see is that not necessarily about technical issues, but I, I will say it's something to do with conflicts between stakeholders and the, between different river basins and also between uh, different localities. And also even that between the different groups of people who are now seeing water issues very differently. Recently, we introduced that new law, uh, basic water law. We, we successfully passed it one year ago. We are about to establish a new water governance regime. We're now working on that establishment National Water Council, also river basin committees in four river basins. But then in the course of doing that, we realized that now this is a golden opportunity to probably improve that water government system. But the other dimension is that we now uh, just realize we just have opened the ponderous box. And then so many different stakeholders, they are about to speak up their complaints and different views. And also they want to also, uh, they express their own concern about uh, water quality issues, water supply issues, and even that, uh, even the upstream and downstream issues, but for example, in the Han and Han River and or Naptong River, the many people they have different issues and then we haven't had any opportunity to talk about in these issues in more open or scientific or maybe objective ways yet because very Korean water resource management has been uh, very much top-down way rather than bottom up so that probably this is a it's something to do with water governance or river basin issues probably need to resolve this issue from now on okay yeah okay well that's good. That, that that's good. And I, I like the way that you kind of forward, forward thinking about that kind of kind of response. We, we let's get time for one last question. Um, and I will, maybe what we'll, we'll ask here uh, is: uh, Do you need strong government support to implement smart solutions and innovation, or is that something that can be brought forward by the private sector? Um, what, what, what's been your your, your experience? Okay, uh, I mean, um, I think the uh, the government investment and government support is one of the key to to make it the successful the SWM systems in the cities. Actually, the, um, even if the UN and Europe to really the, uh, rely on private sectors for the development and the distribution distribution of the smart water management technology. But Korea has just, Korea has, was uh, able to carry out the, this, those projects then led by the state or the public organizations, public entities to benefit from the initial investments that requires the relatively large capital. So the, uh, consequently, this, the financial cost of the disseminating SWM is also an important matter for the in the uh, the SWM systems implementators. So it is mainly covered by the public funding in Korea. It is it is it's, it is uh, the key and is the essential to make it the SWM systems implemented in Korea world and other cities. Okay, okay. Does anyone else want to, to respond there? Uh, Professor uh, Jun Hong Lee, perhaps? Well, uh, I, I'm not, I have no good idea about the smart water management, but uh, you know that uh, now, the, as I told you in previous question that uh, the central government mission for the smart world management is that uh, investment of the research and development for the researchers. I think that's the first step they have to take. And, uh, the, and the, the one good advantage we have in Korean side is that we have very uh, government sponsored uh, the 
the cooperation, and I mean the K Water is uh, pulling all the researchers with a great amount of research fund. That's the main, I mean the main engine of the Korean why Korean smart water management is getting better and better and with the high speed of IT technology development. I think that's the two main reasons, two, two main reasons why the the Korean side smart water management is skill is so high right now. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, does anyone else want to respond? Uh, this is this will be our last question. So this is your, your last opportunity. <laughs> uh, I'll okay. say one thing. Okay. PPP will be very interesting. Yes. The public private partnerships and the I know that Korea's water resource management has been very successful because of the central government's great efforts, but also that we need to bring in that more private sector's involvement, uh, particularly for smart water management, because that, that was the initiated by the, some foreign companies, for example, IBM, other some other big multinational companies. So then now we also now have this, now apply this one into the public sector. So then it's two uh, slight difference, but of course we are working towards the same goal. Because of that, we have to work together. Yes, I have the uh, one comment that the, as we know very well, the uh, level of water services and then the infrastructure is very high compared to any other countries. But the problem is that uh, in nowadays is that uh, you know the uh, aging problems in the uh, water, you know, network and then water facilities. That means that the, in nowadays we need to rehabilitation or retrofitting of the existing uh, water uh, networks. So that's why the government uh, started to uh, modernization project in the, through the uh, across the uh, nations. So uh, the government, central government, you know, uh, you know the uh, invest a lot of money. And then the uh, important thing is that the private sector is also involving this uh, project, just to you know the rehabilitation and then the transport and then the uh, uh, operation for 20 or 30 years to uh, you know the uh, get the money so the uh, private the, the private sector is now being you know the uh, involved in the uh, uh, in this uh, you know project i mean the rehabilitation and the retrofitting of the old you know the pipe networks okay excellent so well, there you. are so many chances to uh, you know participate from the uh, private sector I think exactly exactly there's a lot of opportunities um, to, to create these public private partnerships to bring in private private sector um, and it shouldn't be really the exclusive domain I think of, of I mean to me it seems like the answers we're hearing here is it's not the exclusive domain of one or the other um, but it has to be everybody kind of working together and, and focus on these outcomes well that's it everybody um, uh, let's um, that's already um, been an hour and a half. And so I would again like to thank my panel and a big thank you to Professor Jun Hyu Lee, a professor at Jungbao University, a Professor Sung Hoo Lee, a vice president at the Graduate School of International Studies at Korea University, Dr. Jing Suk Su, a researcher at Korea Water Resources Corporation, and Professor King Tak Yom, a professor at Shunkaiwan University. Um, so I know some of our panel and um, the IWA and the Korea Water Forum, everyone is on Twitter, um, which according to our poll is a really effective way to uh, communicate and to share these ideas. So please look them up, uh, look us up and follow us on Twitter, uh, interact there. Um, and again, remember that if these presentations left you interested in learning more, please check out our LinkedIn webpage and continue to follow the discussion and discuss um, what you're learning here on that, publicate, uh, on that uh, LinkedIn webpage. Um, and to follow us and like our posts and those things will help us move up in social media and, and we'll um, be able to outreach more people um, that way. And please also remember that you can um, follow more of the work that we've been doing here at IWRA, particularly through our flagship uh, publication, the Water International. It's a very well ranked, uh, peer reviewed uh, journal. Um, that publishes both uh, regular and special issues. Um, and we produce uh, policy briefs based on those special issues as well. So you can go to our website uh, and find all the information you want there. Um, and I hope that you find uh, all the insights provided here by, by our panel um, really helpful. Um, it gave me a lot of material to think about in the coming days. Um, and I hope this is generating a lot of creativity and work um, 
in your own work. So um, to remind you, the audience, again, the webinar was brought to you today by the International Water Resources Association, an over 40-year-old nonprofit, um, non-governmental educational organization. We focus on bridging disciplines and geographies and connecting professionals, students, individuals, corporations, and institutions who are all concerned with the sustainable use of the world's water resources. So if you're interested in learning more or becoming a member of the IWRA, please go to www.iwra.org. Um, and on behalf of the whole IWRA office, we thank you very much for tuning in and watching the webinar. So thank, thank you very you. much today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.